Okay, so the purpose of this video mainly is to update you on what's going on with the channel uh, and ask you some questions which hopefully you'll answer in the comments. The video isn't going to plan. I've already done some of the speaking while I was tied in at my desk, but it didn't really work out because I can't concentrate on the two things together. So let's just do a voiceover, which I can add to some, to some video later on. OK, I haven't made so many videos lately, uh, mainly because of family commitments. Uh, I've had some health problems in the family and a couple of deaths in the family as well. And um, it's not just that. I've been buying less stuff as well because I pretty much have everything I'm ever going to need in, in terms of mini discs and cassettes. Uh, plus the fact the cost of living is going up and uh, I don't really want to be spending a lot of my family income on my hobby um, and I'm running out of space so I've had been having to think about this hobby and the YouTube channel and uh, I've got some plans on how I can continue to do it um, whilst not using up too much time and too much money and too much space so what are my plans first of all I want this this hobby for my mini discs and my cassettes to be self-funding I've got more um, mini discs than I can ever listen to. I've got more players than I need. I've got more hi-fi units than I need. Um, and I'm also uh, starting to get more interested in the cassette side of it. So what I've decided is I'm going to make uh, the hobby self-funding. The only money I'm going to spend on mini discs, cassettes and players uh, is, the, is the money I can make from selling uh, what I don't need on eBay. So I've already got, I picked up, um, I wanted to buy some speakers. Uh, so I had a look on eBay and there were a pair of speakers I liked. Uh, and I think it were £10 with local collection. But they came with uh, a few other pairs of speakers and several um, broken, essentially, hi-fi units. So I went and picked up those. I used the speakers and I put the hi-fi units up for sale on eBay. So that's my sort of seed fund, if you like. When those uh, have sold, that's when I'm going to be buying the new belt for my uh, my new uh, Sony LaScala S2 and uh, a few other bits that I need. So I've got a shopping list, but I'm not going to start spending money until I've start until I've clawed back some money from selling some surplus stuff. So normally on most videos, there'll probably not this one, but on most videos. There'll be a link in the description to my um, eBay store. So if you do want to have a look at what uh, I've, I've um, got up for sale, you can go there. But probably not on this um, video. So check out one of the other videos for that. So the, another um, benefit is it's going to be one in, one out. If I want to buy a pack of mini discs, I'm going to have to, uh, apart from getting the money in from selling something, if I buy 10 mini discs, um, you know, more interesting ones than the ones I've got, I'll be selling at least 10 mini discs. And this is something me and my wife have done since before we had kids. We uh, liked the way our house was, but we liked buying stuff as well. And we had a one in one out policy. So every time we went to buy something, we had to get rid of something of equivalent size. So we didn't get such a cluttered house. Now we've got kids uh, and all their stuff is very cluttered. So that's the sort of thing we're going to do as a family as well. One in and at least one out. So in terms of getting the funding for the channel, it's going to be quite an interesting project for me to be able to sell enough stuff to buy the things I want. So basically I'll be upgrading. I might have to sell 20 boring mini discs to buy five interesting mini discs because the price is going up. And um, unfortunately, with the situation with paying import duty and VAT and uh, collection charges to the uh, courier you know, delivery company, buying stock from outside the UK uh, is, is no longer viable. It's just too expensive. And also selling, just interestingly, the eBay has put the fees up. So where I used to be able to sell, um, sell stuff outside of the UK using the eBay global shipping program I would so the customer would, would pay the postage to ship to where they are I would then ship it to the eBay UK shipping center so that's the cost I'd bear and then they would take the rest of the postage 
and use that to send the item abroad. So you could sell 25 pounds worth of um, item with maybe 25 pounds worth of shipping costs of which mine might be 20 uh, might be five pounds. I would pay the uh, fee um, I would pay an eBay fee on the total sale price and the postage price for the UK. But now eBay is going to be charging a commission on the total cost, including the foreign shipping cost. So essentially, where I used to be able to sell something here and ship it for £25 all in and pay um, uh, an eBay fee based on £25, now I've got to pay the eBay fee based on the international shipping as well. And that could be 20 or 25 pounds, depending because shipping costs have gone up. So you end up paying an extortionate amount of eBay fees to sell something abroad. And it's just not worth it anymore. Anyway, so that's what's going to happen. And I'll probably um, put that sort of thing on um, eBay saying, right, I've uh, sold this and this is what I'm going to buy. And because I'm buying something in, one thing has got to go back on eBay and it'll be nice, be interesting for me to try and turn it around like that so I'm not spending more than I'm making and uh, and it's one in and one out. Okay, so there's other expenses involved in this hobby, especially on the YouTube side, which are the cleaning solutions I buy. I want to, um, I want to get some contact cleaner. Uh, I'd like to buy an upgrade to my soldering iron. Uh, for repairs of mini displays and stuff like that um, and that all comes out of family income too so there are other uh, ways that I can generate a little income which will help uh, pay for some of those things on uh, some of, on many of my videos you'll find links to purchase that type of cleaning solutions and stuff from Amazon and I'm part of the Amazon affiliate program um, which is if I put a link up and you buy it from that link, you pay the same cost, but Amazon pay me a small commission. Um, and the plan was that that would help pay for these things. I used to also use that for work. If, uh, if any of my customers need to buy stock, Amazon's just about the cheapest and most convenient place to buy it from. They might need a, a new external hard disk or something like that. I've got those links on my website and um, they buy them, so I direct them to the website. Uh, or I create a custom link for something they need. Uh, I've even had a couple of a uh, few customers buy laptops. So a laptop I've recommended. Um, a few customers have bought that from my um, website uh, Amazon links, and that generates an income. But I've had that going for I think about nine months now, and even though I think at least three people have bought a laptop through that those affiliate links, and other people bought other smaller items. I haven't even hit the threshold, which I think is £50, where Amazon will pay out. So although the Amazon affiliate program will help me in the future if the channel gets much bigger, at the moment it's not making a lot of difference. But any money I get from that, I'm planning to help use that to uh, purchase things like I could do with some lights, to be honest. I could do with a better camera. Uh, I use a phone uh, the phone I did have had too little space, but had good sound quality. This phone's got more storage space, but the sound is not so good. So there's, you know, going forwards, I'm going to have more expenses. And uh, hopefully if the channel does get bigger, I'll be generating a little bit of income from that. So another thing, another link you'll find in many of my videos is a, a donation link, which takes you off to PayPal. Nobody uses it, and I'm not asking for donations. But it's up there in case anybody does. I've had uh, I've had one of my customers has donated more. I did a paid job for her, but she was happy with it. So she she threw a few quid into the pot to buy buy me a coffee. And I did have one person on my website. I posted some tips on there, and don't know who it was. Uh, didn't know who it was, and they made a donation just to say thanks because something I put up there uh, they had some benefit from and they just wanted to pay back by buying me a coffee. So I'm not asking for donations, but there's a link in some of my videos if you want to make them and you can afford to do so. So I'm going to come on to the size of the channel in a minute, um, but the channel isn't really big enough for Patreon, uh, like the, the likes of um, uh, the Retro Future, I think it's got a Patreon page. It definitely has, because I know that personally. Um, 
Techmoan. Techmoan's got 1.2 million viewers. Um, so anyone with more than maybe 10,000 viewers, it might be worth having a Patreon account where people can subscribe. But there's also uh, YouTube's paid channel membership where you can, uh, and you'll see this on some of the bigger YouTubers as well, our channel doesn't allow me to qualify for that yet, it's too small. But for those who um, want to support um, their creators, I think there's um, Mark Fix's stuff, I think he does it as well. You can actually subscribe to the channel, or you can become a member of the channel. So you subscribe, subscriptions to a YouTube channel are free. You click the subscribe and any new videos show up in your subscriptions feed. But there's channel memberships which you can um, pay um, for a channel membership. Um, what happens is say you pay £10 a month to uh, one of your favourite YouTubers. Uh, you pay YouTube £10 and the YouTuber gets £7 of that. So Google keep 30% of the membership fee, if you like, and pass the rest on to the YouTube creator. And that helps people like, I think, Mark Fix's stuff and a few other channels um, that I have a free subscription to. It helps pay for the kit they buy and the stuff they buy. Mark Fix's stuff just buys stuff to fix. He buys things to fix and then probably doesn't use them anymore. Whereas I, this is, I'm just showing you what my hobby is, you know, mini discs and cassettes. So I'm buying these things to use myself. But in, in the long term, if the channel does get big enough, maybe I'll do a channel membership as well. But the problem is with Patreon and YouTube channel memberships is if people are paying your regular monthly amount, then I would feel uh, obliged to get videos out on a regular basis. Now, I, I, I pay Techmoan, uh, I belong to his Patreon, and he's had some um, health issues and bereavements in his family, and he's not been able to get his weekly videos out. Uh, now, most people don't mind. They're just glad of, his content is excellent, they're just glad to see a video when he gets a chance to send it out, but he or when he gets a chance to create it. But he feels guilty because he hasn't um, fulfilled his obligations as he sees it. People are paying a monthly amount to him and uh, he's not not able to do, through whatever circumstances, he's not able to send to, to create as many videos as he used to. And he, he sort of feels guilty, but everyone in his Patreon is quite supportive. He says, I'm not going to be able to upload quite as many videos if you feel you're not getting what you paid for, then stop your Patreon uh, contribution. And what actually happened is a few people paid him more money. <laughs> so it was counter to what he was after, but they were just trying to show him the support. Um, but I, I know how he feels. If I was taking a monthly subscription via Patreon or from a channel subscription on YouTube, uh, sorry, a channel membership on YouTube, then I would feel obliged to get one or two videos out a week and I've got a family and a job and other commitments that mean I can't set, do those videos. I'd like to but I just can't do it at the moment so I'm quite reluctant to go down even in the future if the channel grows quite a bit I'm quite reluctant to go down the Patreon route or the channel a paid a YouTube channel membership route. So that leads me on to a question I have for you. It's not a question for me and my channel specifically, but it's a, a question about the other channels you like, your favorite channels. If you either are or you were to support those creators financially, what route would you prefer to use? Which of the following routes would you use? There's the Patreon one, which is a third party company. Um, the creator sets up a Patreon page and people can go to that um, and, and you get perks. So you pay someone a couple of pounds a month, whatever it might be, and you get exclusive videos or you get early access to the videos. There's a community tab in there. So like-minded people uh, can post comments to show off their kit and everything else. So that's Patreon. Um, you can also um, set up a, a pay, regular PayPal 
um, contribution to your favorite creators as some do that and that's just done independently of YouTube again you just pay them each month or a one-off through PayPal and there's the paid channel membership on YouTube so if you like a creator enough you can pay a monthly amount to YouTube and YouTube send a large proportion of that off to the creator so if you do already pay for your favorite creators or one of your favorite creators on YouTube via those methods what methods do you use or if you wanted to pay um, to you know to support one of the YouTube creators which ones of those would you use would you only use patreon would you only use the YouTube um, channel membership or would you consider a PayPal contribution which in effect is easier to cancel or any combination so uh, leave a comment you don't have to tell me whether you're doing it of other creators and this is not for me I'm just interested in what you other YouTube viewers because I'm mainly a YouTube viewer I watch way more on YouTube than I than I upload so uh, I currently do um, Patreon I would do uh, PayPal and I would possibly do the YouTube channel membership if I like the creators enough so which combination of those would you do if you were to support a creator directly uh, or if you are actually supporting them, which ones do you use? So leave, uh, leave a comment and uh, don't forget your comments are public so other people will see what you, um, what you post. Okay, channel subscriptions. We've currently got 862 people subscribed to this YouTube channel. So thanks very much for that if you've subscribed. Um, the reason that's important is when I get to a thousand subscribers and 5,000 hours of watch time in, in the last 365 days, I'll be able to join the YouTube Partner Program. Now that's where YouTube um, will give me a share of the revenue of the adverts that they show on my videos. At the moment, with 862 subscribers, I think by the end of this year, 2022, I'll have reached the threshold of 1,000 subscribers. Um, I don't have enough watch time. I need 5,000. I think it's 5,000 or 4,000. I'll clarify that on the bottom of the screen. It could be 4,000 um, watch hours in three in the last 365 days. So I've got to qualify both on subscribers and the amount of time people have spent watching my videos. And I think I'm going to hit the threshold for subscribers first, um, but I won't have enough watch time. So... Um, if you're currently, if you do watch my videos, but you're not subscribed, it would be really quite handy if you did subscribe so I can reach the 1,000 subscriber threshold a bit more quickly. Thank you very much. And I'll try to get more videos out. I'd like to be doing videos once a week, but it's just not possible. First of all, I've got nothing to show you because I've not bought anything or done any work on it because I'm busy elsewhere. Um, secondly, a video might take even half an hour to shoot it might take two or three hours to edit and upload and get on YouTube so and you might only see a 15 minute video so it's quite a bit of time taken and I'm in awe of the creators like Tech Moan uh, and some of the others who have got really high standards for their videos and literally they might take them a week to edit it to shoot it, edit it and get it online. Those are professional YouTubers. Okay, so once I hit this threshold of 1,000 subscribers and five, four or 5,000 watch time hours over a year, I'll get a share of the ad revenue that um, YouTube makes. So YouTube sells ads. Uh, in fact, Google sells ads. That's what they do now. They used to be a search engine, but now they get nearly all of their income from the adverts they sell on websites and on YouTube and in various other places. So I don't see ads. I've got YouTube Premium, so I pay, can't remember how much it is, £18 a month, something like that. And all of my family's Google accounts, um, we get YouTube ad free. So we don't see ads. I hate ads, but they pay the bills. Um, so do you see ads? This is another question for you. Leave your answer in the comments. Do you see ads on my videos? Because uh, I don't see them on anyone's videos. Uh, I'm guessing you get an ad before my videos. And if the video is long enough, 
you'll get an ad, uh, a mid roll, like a mid video ad. So once I do qualify for the YouTube partner program and YouTube starts paying me a share of the advert revenue, um, I've looked into it and I've looked at other YouTubers who have posted this information online and I estimate I'll probably get the grand total of about £20 per month as a share of advert revenue. Now you're, you're seeing videos, sorry, you're seeing adverts on my videos already so it makes no difference to you but the £20 a month to me helps just put a few extra pennies in the pot to pay for I could do with some lights, I could do with some better lighting, and that sort of stuff's expensive. So £20 a month will help pay for some of the costs of the channel, or go towards buying some extra stock. And by extra stock, I mean other things I'd like to buy for this hobby, uh, which most likely I'll be doing a video on for you. So that leads me on to um, another question for you. What video length do you like? When I'm watching videos on YouTube, I think the sweet spot for a video that I like to watch is about 12 minutes. There are some videos, uh, one or two creators in particular, and I won't say who they are, that when they release a video, I will find dedicated quality me time and sit down and watch the whole thing, no matter how long it is. There are some creators I like which do long videos, 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Um, some of them even longer than that, but I don't have time to watch those long videos in one go. I might watch them over, you know, a couple of days or something like that. And it depends what I'm doing. If uh, if I'm having lunch, I'll be able to watch um, a 10 or 15 minute video and that fits in with the amount of time I usually get for lunch. If I'm doing something um, boring in the office or at home that doesn't need um, my full attention, then I'll put a video, maybe a longer video there. Uh, but I do like to um, concentrate on the videos I'm watching. And some of you are thinking it already, a good time to watch a video is when you're hiding from the family in the bathroom, in the toilet. It might be the only 10 minutes you get to yourself that day. So uh, around 10 or 12 or 15 minutes is uh, a good length of videos for the ones I like to watch. You can get in, you can get some me time in there, enjoy someone else's video, and uh, not have it take up too much of your day. But not everyone has a family or a job, indeed, um, or a busy lifestyle. So for videos I put on YouTube, what length of video do you like? Is it longer videos, shorter videos? Uh, just leave some comments if you don't mind. Uh, and I'll try, I can't keep everyone happy, but I'll try to tailor some of my videos. If you like longer videos, then I've got some stuff I can do. If you like shorter videos, I can do shorter videos. Uh, or if I've got a long video, but you prefer shorter ones, I can maybe do it in episodes, uh, which will help me with the editing. So uh, leave comments on all of that or anything else you'd like to see in the channel. Talking of that, what would you like me to do videos on? The channel started uh, for mini discs. Um, I've got over 100 videos now, and I'd say probably 80 of those, 80% of those are based uh, are for mini discs. When I first discovered mini discs, they were new to me, and I made the channel to document my journey in learning about them. I'm not going to say I know everything about mini discs and players because there are groups online that know way more than I do and have got much nicer collections than I do. But I'm a user, I use mini discs quite frequently and I like looking at them. I like, I don't want to collect them so much, but I do like to uh, look at them and find out a bit more about them and use them on a regular basis. But back in the day, I used a lot of cassettes and I've got back into cassettes now uh, an insp um, a website that I uh, liked a lot was Cassette Comeback. Didn't understand what half of what he was talking about when he used different decks and calibrated, uh, calibrated his decks for his tapes. Um, but I've got a little bit of knowledge on that and I'm getting more into that. And when I'm working in the office, I do like to use cassettes rather than mini discs because the, um, the hi-fi I use, I can turn on the hi-fi and start the cassette with a single button press. And I can turn it off just by pressing the power and it will stop the cassette and then it will start it again where I was listening before. 
and you don't often get that with uh, the mini discs especially on that player if you stop the mini disc part way through and turn it off when you come back you've got to start from the beginning or shuffle through to the track you're on my new Sony La Scala S2 doesn't have a mini disc player on it um, but the reason I bought that was so I can get better recordings on my cassettes either to play on that or on uh, another device and uh, I do use that for mini disc. I've got, I use a, a portable player, which does remember where I got to on the disc. So when I restart it again, it starts in the same place. But for some reason, I still prefer cassettes while I'm working. And I do like to get my Walkman out from time to time when I'm working around the house and listen to a Walkman. What videos do you want to see on this channel? Do you want me to mainly stick to mini discs? Uh, do you uh, want me to do more in cassettes? I also like things like um, Game Boys and I'd love to get into some of the retro sort of handheld desktop um, games like the Grandstand games um, from the uh, late 70s and early 80s. But that sort of stuff's really expensive. So really what I'd like to know is do you subscribe just for the mini disc content? Do you subscribe just for the cassette content? Or do you subscribe because you're interested in, in, in either of those or indeed something else? Um, with a YouTube channel, it's best to um, focus. It's best to specialize and find your niche. And mini disc is one niche. Compact cassette is another niche. Uh, repairs, I suppose, is another niche. But there's only so much I can do. Uh, there's only so many mini discs I can buy or players I can buy or cassettes I can buy or Walkmans I can buy or things I can fix. Um, so I might run out of stuff. I'm surprised I've got as far as 100 videos, over 100 videos now. Um, so if you're a subscriber, it doesn't matter if you're not a subscriber, but if you're a subscriber, what do you subscribe for? The mini discs, the cassettes, the other stuff I talk about or any combination of them. Please leave comments because I really want to try and do more of what you want to see. Thank you. One more question for you. Um, the cards which uh, I used to put on my videos and some other YouTubers still put on their videos. I'll put one in the top right of the screen now. Uh, they're links to other videos, either other videos that I've done or other videos that other people have put up on YouTube. I don't think many people click on those. One problem is if you click on it or tap on it on your mobile device is it will take you to the other video and then you have to stop watching the one you're watching. So for me that doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're if you're watching this video and you just clicked on the card that I just put up there, you've gone to a different video. And that doesn't help me with my watch time. Uh, on this particular video. So do you you do you find those cards useful? If many people do find them useful, then I'll link to them. What I generally do is if I'm referring to an earlier video I've done, then I'll put a link in the description box, um, which is below or sometimes to the side of the video, depending on what you're watching it on. But YouTube keep messing around and putting it in different places. And I've heard, I don't do this myself, but I've heard that some people watch YouTube on TV. What's that about? And there, I don't think you can get to the description box. So do you ever click on those cards that appear on the top right on YouTube videos? Um, leave a comment to let me know. Can you also let me know if you're watching on a TV, can you get to the description box of a video? So if, if I did put a link to one of my videos in the description box and you can't get there on, on a TV, then that's no good to you. So would you need the cards? Is it something, you, could you click on the card even if you can't get to the description box? Yeah, let me know about those cards. How do you navigate around different videos for your favorite YouTube channels? Thank you. So that's the plan. Generally, it's gonna be one in and one out. So anything I buy, if I buy anything, something else has got to go, it's going to get sold and that money is going to be used to buy my future purchases for my mini discs and my cassettes. For the channel the plan is to get to a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours in a year. 
and then I can get a share of the ad revenue from YouTube and that will probably go towards buying the equipment I need uh, for the channel, such as lighting and um, cleaning equipment and that sort of thing. Most of all, I'm going to try and keep the content interesting for you. So what you can do is keep the subscriber numbers up for me. So if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Watch the videos you enjoy. That gets the watch time up. Keep the comments coming because comments um, help the channel with engagement. The more comments and engagement you have with the channel, the more likely YouTube is to recommend the channel to other people. Plus the fact the comments are interesting. I learn stuff uh, and I like the uh, back and forth we have. People sharing tips and ideas and uh, you know information about what they've bought or what they've used in the past. So of course, if you've got any other suggestions, please leave a comment. Uh, but most of all, thank you for watching and commenting and liking. And thanks for your support over the last few years for my channel. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video. The editing on this one's going to be a challenge. <laughs>